The Steelers really got after it in free agency on Thursday. We'll talk about their new signings, Keanu Neal, uh, Braden Fajoko, and the visit of Bud Dupree, and all the top 30 visits that they've been bringing in lately. It's ones that have, that, are, that have come in, are coming in. It's a lot to talk about in the moves. They're getting ready to set up the NFL draft. I'm Chris Carter, your host here in the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, joined by Ray Fittipato, who's been on the scene at the Steelers headquarters all week long. We have a lot to talk about here. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive Podcast, a show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, hosted by Christopher Carter. And hello and welcome to the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Like I said, we're joined today by Ray Fittipaldo, one of our esteemed Steelers beat writers here at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. You can find all the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette content at post-gazette.com and check out all of our sports section stuff. If you want any of our video and audio content, video, of course, YouTube, like this video if you enjoy it, subscribe to this channel and get all of our daily content that comes out from the Post-Gazette. You can find this show Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here, the North Shore Drive podcast. Also, you can check out all of our stuff on all our podcasting platforms which is all across all the podcasting apps out there ray it's been a busy week for you you've been you've been showing up the Steelers facility even while the the owners meetings are going on and mike tomlin's saying this and art rooney's saying that and omar khan's talking but all the while the steelers have been pretty busy this week yeah i mean you can make an argument chris that they've been just as busy in the second wave of free agency as they were in the first and they were pretty darn busy um in the first wave too so yeah busy time of year for Omar Khan in that front office, in addition to the free agent uh, signings uh, this week that we're going to talk about, top 30 visits are underway. Joey Porter Jr. was on campus yesterday. They'll have many, many more in the coming days and weeks, so uh, keep an eye out for those too. I want to talk to you more about the 30 bits in a bit. Let's get to the free agent signings they have made, and then we'll get to the ones that they might also make soon. Keanu Neal, Braden Fajoko. Count O'Neill, safety. He's coming by way of the Buccaneers, though he's also played for the Cowboys and the Falcons in his time in the NFL. Former first-round pick himself in the 2016 NFL draft. Um, what is your opinion on him as a Terrell Edmonds replacement? Because if you look at him last year, he wasn't just a box safety. He was moved around a bit. But, you know, he's a little bit shorter, a little bit slower, has some injuries to him. Is he a good fit to replace what Terrell Edmonds brought to the defense? I don't think they're going to ask him to replace Terrell Edmonds, who was a full-time starter for, for most of his five seasons here. If you look at the way the Bucks used him last year, Chris, um, about 600 snaps. So, you know, I don't know how many defensive snaps the Bucks had last year, but I'm guessing that was around 50 or 55 percent. So I think, you know, it, and Mike Tomlin hasn't talked about this yet. You know, we'll probably get a better idea on this later in the spring and into the summer. But I think DeMonte KZ is going to be – um, uh, full-time safety in passing situations, uh, passing down sub packages. And I think Neil is a, uh, probably a pretty good fit um, for running situations, maybe early downs, um, the quote unquote base defense where they want a big run stopper in there. Um, you know, he's six feet, 217 pounds. So he's a little bit heavier than Casey came into this league as a hard hitter. So I think, you know, once they figure this out, um, you know, I, I think he's probably going to play in that role. Uh, and I think that this also gives them the the uh, opportunity to con continue that three safety look that they used late in the season where Terrell Edmonds kind of dropped down and was more of a box dime linebacker type of a role. So all those things are in play. But, but again, I think we'll have a better idea um, later this spring and summer once we see them practice a bit. You know, that, that's where I'm at, is that Keanu Neal doesn't necessarily have to be the, the, the first safety on the field after Mika Fitzpatrick, but he's a veteran presence that brings you to the, that brings in for the Steelers. He can he can float around the box a little bit. He can he can come in and help be more physical, but give you a veteran presence where, you know, he can communicate with KZ and Fitzpatrick and you can expect him to kind of be on the same page with them. And, you, you know, Terrell Austin, they love to dial up their disguises. They love to switch up their coverages. He's a guy who you could comfortably probably put in there and say, hey, you have this responsibility, but you're disguising this. Do this in a way that's professional. Do this in a way that's experienced and, you know, throw in your experience, your your veteran studies and your wiles in there. So I think that's a very good – but you bring up a good, very good point. He's not necessarily – you're right. He's not a starter like, like Terrell Edmonds. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this rotation works out. Another, my last question here on the safety, though, 
does this take safety off a priority list for the Steelers in the earlier rounds, or could you still see them going and getting a younger guy there who could grow with, grow with this group? Yeah, I think in the earlier rounds, yes. And, you know, I, I don't think you're going to see other than Brian Branch, if Brian Branch goes in the first round and there's debate whether he's going to be a safety or a slot corner in the NFL, I think most people probably are going to give him a shot at slot corner first. But other than Brian Branch, I don't, I don't really see a safety going in round one. Then you get into round two. I, I think there might be, you know, two or three that come off the board. Then most of the rest of those guys are third round and on. So, I, you know, I think the Steelers um, probably fourth round and on would be looking for a safety, maybe a young guy who can come in and compete a, a little bit, maybe challenge Trey Norwood um, a little bit, maybe a guy who develops, you know, if he's a seventh round pick, maybe a guy who develops on the practice squad. But, yes, um, you know, it, as is their goal every offseason, Chris, if they had to line up and play a game tomorrow, they could do it. They're not going to count on the draft to get a quote-unquote starter or starter caliber player in this draft. Let's get your thoughts on Braden Fajoko, the defensive lineman they signed. He played three years with the Chargers. When I look at the look at his tape, he seems just like a pure run stuffer. Like he's coming in to be in that second wave of guys. Just you know, when the games when the games dragging on a little bit and another team's trying to run the ball to take advantage of Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi coming off the field. He can be a guy that lines up in the middle and just holds down the fort. He won't get after the quarterback, but he also will kind of help keep your linebackers clean. Is that an accurate assessment? And how do you see him? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, he's been a nose tackle everywhere he's been mm -hmm. with LSU and then with the Chargers for the past three seasons, three starts last season, four starts overall in his first three seasons in, in the league. So you know, I don't think they're asking him to come in here and play a ton of snaps. I think he'll be competition uh, for Montrevious Adams, who took over as the starting nose tackle early last season in place of Tyson Olulu. And uh, again, Chris, you know, if they want to go go ahead and draft a nose tackle, you know, say anytime after round one, probably even round two, they could do that. You know, they can add to that group and there would be good competition with Fehoko, excuse me, and, um, and Montrevious Adams. So um, I, I like the move. You know, I, I think they were a little thin there with just Montrevious Adams. Um, you know, Isaiah Loudermilk in a pinch can play nose. Hayward in a pinch can play nose. But, uh, you know, they, they, they got better with their depth yesterday going into the draft, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing too. Uh, I think that they're they're filling out their spots, and it's like what you said. They, they want to be in a position where they could play. If they had to play right now, they could. But this puts them in a position of strength, I, I believe. And we've talked about this all throughout free agency with the moves that they've had. The Steelers continue to sign guys that make it so that their roster isn't barren in in any specific spot. There's not a place where it's like, ooh, if they don't draft right here, they're in a really bad place here. Uh, you know, like like safety, going and getting Keanu Neal. Now you don't have to draft safety high, whereas, you know, after Terrell Evans left for the Eagles, there was a thought, mm, maybe they'll have to because there's not a guarantee that it's gonna it's gonna, you know, that they're gonna get their guy there. And uh they they want to they one, you need depth there because you, you can never count on you know everyone to be healthy all year long. But two, you want to have those three safety sets. So that's there. Uh, uh, they've signed two veteran linebackers. I think they could still get another one to throw in there. They could also draft another one. A lot of moves to have, be had there. But the linebacker that everyone was talking about when you know Pittsburgh was the guy who visited the city, and that was Bud Dupree. I want to get Ray's thoughts on Bud Dupree's visit and if he is going to be signed by the Steelers. As of us recording this Friday morning at 10, 19 a.m., he has not. But we'll get Ray's thoughts on that in a minute here on the North Shore Drive podcast. Stay right here as we get ready to talk about that. But first, got to talk to you guys about our great sponsors at GameTime.co, which is the best place for you to go buy tickets for events in your area or anywhere. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. You get killer deals in the, on last minute tickets and they give you the best price guarantee so that you can stop stressing over the price of tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're about to have at your favorite events. You can download the Game Time app, which allows you to book tickets up to the last minute. If you didn't plan far out in advance, that happens to me all the time. If I'm busy and I didn't realize I'd be free, and I'm like, oh man, I get to go to this concert, I get to go to this game. I wanted to get tickets, but it's are so expensive now. Game time is going to help you find the best price every time. There's plenty of times that you that, that, that you'll get this opportunity, and game time is the with a chance for you to take advantage of it. You get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, everything you could imagine there. Game time guarantee also means that you'll always get the best price. If you find 
find pr- tickets that are in the same section and same, the same row that the event that you're in for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code PIT. That's P I T T, all capital letters, PIT, for $20 off your first purchase at game time. Or go to their website, gametime.co. That's G A M E T I M E dot C O. Terms, con- terms apply. Create an account and rede- redeem code PIT for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed at Game Time. Back here on the North Shore Drive podcast, Chris Carter here with Ray Fittaparo talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ray, um, the Steelers brought in Bud Dupree for a visit. He was putting it on Instagram Live. Gary Dulac was tweeting it out. You were tweeting. You were talking about it. Um, is this a real thing? What's the status of Bud Dupree? Do you think he does get signed by the Steelers? What's the What's the update here? And is this the right move to bring him back after his stint in Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, they brought Bud in yesterday, and I, I don't think either side would have done it if they weren't serious. So I think, um, you know, depending on where Bud is with his mindset right now, I, I think this thing could come together. I think the only thing that's holding it up right now is Bud has to decide what does his role, um, what is his role going to be for the 2023 season with the Steelers, and can he find a better role somewhere else, and, of course, could he make more money somewhere else. So, you know, the way it was described to me yesterday was um, they were working f- through some things, you know. Um, I, I don't know exactly what that means. So I didn't get the idea yesterday when I was down there that it was imminent. And of course, we're taping Friday morning. Nothing happened overnight. So um not exactly sure of the timeline here, Chris, on this one. I think, you know, um, depending on the interest with Bud, across the league. This could happen sooner. This could happen later, depending on what his options are. But uh, yes, there, there are no issues with Bud's health. Um, he's fine. And uh, if they could agree on money and his role, I think he'll be a Steeler again. I think that would be an interesting ad for the Steelers to bring him back. You know, you you covered it. He had a great relationship with not only Tomlin, but also T.J. Watt and the organization. It wasn't a bad blood thing when he left. It was a, hey, you're about to get paid a lot of money, and we got to pay the other guy a lot of money. Uh, of course, though, he only gets four sacks for the Tennessee Titans, deals with injuries in both of his years there, and he was set to make, I think, $20 million or count $20 million against the cap this year. And it just, you know, Titans just like, hey, man, we, we can't afford to pay that if you're not producing at, like, a, 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 you know, at a all-time level. So uh, right. he wasn't. And, uh, you know, again, it's not official that he's back yet, but I do think it would be, in, it, I think that him being back and, you know, Jerry tweeted this out too, you know, he won't be back to chat. This won't be Melvin Ingram. He won't be questioning, you know, Mel- Melvin Ingram came in and said, oh yeah, I'd be fine with a backup role. And then we didn't have, when he had to do the backup role under Alex Highsmith, he was like, get me out of here. But I, I think Bud Dupree is going to understand his role. And also, I think him coming off the bench, maybe he lasts a bit longer. Maybe he doesn't deal with as many injuries because he's not playing as many snaps. Uh, I, I think this could be a very interesting fit for what the Steelers need right now. Yeah, I mean, he did have an unfortunate run with injuries here, starting, um, of course, late in the 2020 season when he blew out his knee with the Steelers. Um, I looked yesterday because I think he played 11 games apiece in his two seasons with the Titans. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just – you know, just banged up and just not able to, um, you know, be the player he he was in the latter stages of his career with the Steelers. And you mentioned it. This happens sometimes. And you you see reunions with the Steelers a lot with players that leave re, via free agency. Um, the Steelers wished him well when he signed that five-year, yeah. $80 million deal. I mean, that was life-changing money for him. He wasn't going to get it here with T.J. Watt in line for that for that big – contract that he signed um uh, a couple of seasons ago so um you know good for bud to go out and make that money but uh this happens to guys you know late 20s early seasons they have to figure out where they are in their career um will they accept a backup role and i think you know we we said this the last couple of weeks chris if he's willing to do that i think it's a no-brainer for the steelers takes the pressure off them of having to draft an edge you know say in the top three rounds you know, they can go about their business and just pick the best player on the board in each round. Um, 
So right now, as we tape Friday morning, number three outside linebacker is really one of the few places on this roster that's a little bit unsettled, right? They got Zach yeah. Gentry. Zach Gentry last week. They've been filling in the holes here. Um, backup nose tackle, as, as we talked about, you know, uh, strong safety we just talked about. So other than number three outside <coughs> linebacker and really number three receiver, um, which we'll get to when we talk talk about the top 30 visits, um, you know, it seems like they're pretty set across the roster. So, um, again, I don't know the timeline with, with Bud Dupree, but um, I think it makes sense for the Steelers, and I think it makes sense for Bud if he wants to come back. Let's say they sign Bud Dupree or a Bud Dupree type, like another edge rusher veteran before the NFL draft. Do you see them still being you know, entertaining the idea of drafting an edge in the first three rounds? Because that's again, it's a position that you can that you can always you know get better at, get younger at. Um, and Alex Highsmith's contract is coming up, so it's like right. that's you know they've they you know Omar Khan said that he that they, that the Steelers are would love to bring keep him around, but you know you're already paying T.J. Watt a lot of money. And you could afford to pay Alex Highsmith a good contract, you know, while you're paying, you know, Kenny Pickett on his rookie contract. But it, it is, it, do you see Edge as, as kind of now off the board as far as something you don't think they take on day one or day two and like maybe they take a, a depth guy in the fourth round or the seventh round? Or is that something that's still on the map? You know, people are still mocking Nolan Smith to the Steelers. Yeah, I, I think it's still in play, Chris. Um, and for two reasons. I, I think... You know, we don't know about Alex Highsmith. We know they want right. to sign him, but, um, you know, that that is that is not a done deal. And they're probably not going to get to that until after the draft. And I think anything that Bud signs here will be a one- or a two-year deal, probably a one-year deal. Look, I mean, if you put yourself in Bud's shoes, coming off two injury-riddled seasons with the Titans, it's going to come here in a different role. He's going to be looking to build up his um, – you know, his, his status again, so he can get a better contract in 2024. So I don't think he would want to tie himself down. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm not saying first round, but I think anytime 49 or after, if they find a guy that they want to develop who could be a number four this year, and then maybe a number three in 2024, perhaps, depending on what happens with Highsmith, um, you know, even a starter in 2024, or 2025. We'll have to see how that un un unfolds here. But we all know the Steelers want to keep high Smith, but you do have to acknowledge it is a big unknown here, um, you know, uh, going into this spring and the summer. Yeah, no, you, you are absolutely right. It's a big unknown. I mean, this is a guy with double digit sacks now. Uh, he's in a really good part of his career. He's been getting better. If he gets better this year, you know, he could price himself out of the Steelers. There could be a team that wants to give him a Bud Dupree like contract. And that could be a very interesting thing for the Steelers to explore there. I, you know, I've also I've brought this up in the past just as like, you know, pure speculation, what could happen. But what if they do draft an edge and then you're sitting there week six, week seven, that edge is really good. And someone's willing to give you a, a first round pick for an Alex for Alex Highsmith. Is that something that the Steelers even entertain at that point? Again, not that that definitely happens, but as right. a younger edge rusher who. You know, if he's on his pay on his way to get a second straight double digit sack season, people jump at those opportunities. Yeah. So if you remember when they drafted Alex Highsmith, they knew that Bud Dupree was going to move on, right? So they were right. they were kind of grooming Alex Highsmith for that role. Um, he stepped in as a starter as a rookie, but it was only as a starter until uh, you know once Bud Dupree got hurt. So the Steelers would have a plan, I think, if they used an early draft pick. Um, on an outside linebacker. So you have to remember that, uh, you know, he's he's entering the final year of his rookie contract, but the Steelers do have that franchise tag. If they really, really wanted to keep him in 2024, they could do that. And as far as the trade goes, Chris, you know, it would depend on what the Steelers' record was. If they were in contention, if they were playing well, if there's any chance for them to, to get to the playoffs – uh, they're going to keep Alex Highsmith. They, they would keep a strong three or four man rotation because that would, you know, be beneficial for to, to them winning games. So unless they were really, really bad in the first half of the season, I wouldn't see them trading Alex Highsmith. But again, a lot of people didn't think they would trade Chase Claypool last year. They did that. They were bad and they had somebody behind him who was quite good. So you do make a good point there, but uh, again, I'm not expecting the Steelers to get off to another, 
two and six start or whatever. Right. But hey, if they do, something like that could be in play. Yeah. And again, there's a lot of what ifs there. Again, they'd have to, there's the if, if they draft the guy in the earlier rounds, right. and if that guy's playing really well, and if Alex Highsmith get tracks a party, and if someone's willing to pay, there's a lot of things to get there. But I just, exploring all the things here while we have that time in the off season before we're going every day with practices and everything. So we got a lot to talk about still top 30 visits. There's some interesting guys who've come in and some interesting guys who are rumored to be coming in. Lots of stuff that we'll break down here in the North shore drive podcast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Back here in the North shore drive podcast, Chris Carter with Ray Fittipato, Ray, um, the Steelers' top 30 visits, they've been continuing to roll in here. You've been there at the facility. Who have been some of the bigger names, that, or who are the names that they're bringing? Because they're, they're all big at this point, right? Yeah, listen, uh, we'll start last week in chronological order. Minnesota center John Michael Schmitz was mm. in on Friday. Jonathan Mingo, a receiver from Mississippi, also was in last week. And then on, uh, get my days mixed up, Thursday, after the owners' meetings wrapped up, Joey Porter Jr. was in for a visit. So, uh, you know, of those, um, of the, that trio, I think obviously Joey Porter Jr. is the um, is the guy who would be, you know, a first-round lock. I know there's been some talk about John Michael Schmitz at 17, probably more so in the second round for him. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I mean, I, Joey Porter Jr., I think um, it's a local visit. All the kids who play local high school football here come down. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I think that was a no brainer for them. I think Joey Porter is still very much in consideration for them, but, uh, you're going to see a lot of names come through here in the coming weeks. Don't be surprised if you see some other big names. Kelly Ringo is one of them who's scheduled for a visit. I'm not quite sure the timeline for his visit, but, uh, yeah, they're bringing in first round types. They're bringing in day two guys. They're bringing in day three guys that they want to take a look at. Let's. Let, let's let, I want to get to cornerback because it seems like they're bringing a lot of those in. But let's let's take a step back here. And you mentioned Jonathan Mingo. That's a big slot receiver. There are a big receiver, period, that, 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 that's, a, that's on this draft board. What's your outlook on to see what they're trying to do there with receiver? You know, there's been a lot of talk about what if they could get Jackson, Jackson Smith and Jigba? What if they go get Jordan Addison and reunite him with Kenny Pickett? Jonathan Mingo, though, he's different from those type of guys. Oh, he'd be a big slot, right? I mean, he, yeah. he would fit um... – you know, I think he's in the six two range. Um, yeah, like six two, six three, really yeah. big dude. He's, he's got a lot of traction too. Yeah, listen, he, he's not a burner either. I saw the comp um, on NFL.com. Uh, Lance Zierlein does the write ups, mm -hmm. and uh, his comp for for Mingo was Anquan Bolden. So, you know, big slot for the Ravens. Um, early in his career, he was uh, a little bit more he was explosive. For the Cardinals. Yeah, when he was with the Cardinals and. He was kind of playing second fiddle to, to Larry Fitz, and mm -hmm. he was getting a lot of single coverage. He could pop some big plays. But, you know, I think in the end with George Pickens on the outside, the Steelers have never shown any thought or any interest in moving Deontay Johnson inside a lot. If it happens, it happens on rare occasions. So a guy like Mingo or really any receiver in this draft, Chris, is going to have to play inside. Now it's just a matter of what flavor do you want. Do you want the bigger slot type guy? that bigger possession receiver like an Anquan Bolden, or do you want another type um, like, like a Calvin Austin? And uh, another name uh, that's coming in could be here Friday or, or over the weekend is Charlie Jones mm. out of Purdue. Um, there was a report Thursday night. He was on his way to Pittsburgh. Um, really an unknown going into the season. Didn't have a lot of production at Buffalo. He was a Buffalo for one season, two seasons with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Again, I think he had 20 run, 21 receptions in 2021. And then he's got 110 receptions, 1361 in yards, and 12 touchdowns for Purdue this past season. Uh, and, again, he's another guy, third rounder after, probably fourth rounder after, you know, a team like the Steelers could take him. So, um, yeah, they're looking at all types of slot receivers. We mentioned it last segment. They haven't filled that void in free agency. So it does make sense. It's starting to look like – they're targeting late day two, maybe early day three types of receivers. That's very interesting to me. If they could, if they could pull that off uh, and get that extra receiver in the room, and a, a big receiver too, a physical guy. 
that's different from what they have. You know, George Pickens can go up and get balls, but he's he's very linky. He's very he doesn't have a lot of a lot of thickness to him. Deontay right. Johnson's a separator. Calvin Austin's a speedster. This would be a different type of guy, and this would give them an interesting assortment of players. Also, if you're getting a big slot guy, that guy can probably help you out a little bit in the run game too, as far as blocking. So, a lot of interesting aspects to add to your team there. Yeah, I think what they've been lacking. If you just look at last season and. Um, it's hard to know what they wanted out of Chase Claypool. Obviously, it didn't work. They dealt him in the middle of the season. But ever since Juju left, they've been lacking that dependable, move the chains, possession type of receiver. And if they can get that type of guy again, um, you know, I, I think it might be worth it. Listen, Juju came in the second round. But sometimes, Chris, you can find those guys third, fourth round. I know they don't have fifth or sixth round picks, but – um, you can find those types of guys later in the draft, maybe guys who aren't burners, uh, maybe guys who didn't put up um, big production or big play production in college, but just guys who know how to get open, guys who can be good possession receivers in the NFL. So I think Mingo and Charlie Jones would kind of fit that mold. Jones, though, is more of a traditional slot. He's a punt and kick returner. Right. Um, you know, he's like 5'11", 175. He wouldn't fit into that bigger slot role. He'd be – you know, kind of, you know, more of the same of what they already have with Calvin Austin and uh, Anthony Miller. Let's flip back to cornerbacks real quick. There's also a, a report from Ryan Fowler of the Trade Network that, or the Trade, uh, yeah, the Trade Network, uh, or not, the, excuse me, the Draft Network. I keep messing up that name. But the uh, Ryan Fowler reporting that Julius Brent's another cornerback that's come in. So now you have Joey Porter Jr., Emmanuel Forbes, uh, Julius Brent's. We don't know when exactly he's coming in. Um, right. other cornerbacks, uh, Kelly Ringo, you said it, yep. it, it is another guy in there. They're making an effort to get the cornerback th this year. It seems like, you know, we've been talking about that. That should be a priority for them. It seems like they are getting ready to make it a priority here. And all those guys you, you mentioned Porter first round. Yeah. Uh, e even Forbes, Forbes and Ringo could be, could be considered first round. If not, those guys are all day second round picks. So oh, yeah. they're, they are targeting, Day one and day two guys. I'm not sure how, you know, would Brents be in play at 49 or would Brents be more in play at 80? You know, those sometimes when you get into day two, you know, there's there's varying grades from different teams and some guys are valued more than others. So I'm not, you know, you usually see Brents more in the third round, um, but definitely um, day two types of corners are coming in here. And I, I think you're definitely going to see that addressed, whether it's a 17, uh, 32, 49 or 80 you are going to see a cornerback drafted definitely with one of those top four picks. It's going to be very interesting to see how this rolls out. Again, what I said at the top of the show, there's about five different avenues this team could go early, early on. This is something that I think that uh, that the Steelers are in a position to. This is a position of strength that they're in. And, you know, and Omar Khan's even talking about this. They could trade up, they could trade down, and they could still get guys with how deep this class is uh, that, that are really talented people uh, that, at different position groups. You know, tight end still a group that you could still look at, even though they've signed Zach Gentry, uh, wide receiver, of course, still in play. I mean, we're still, we still, we haven't even talked about offensive tackle in this episode. So, Lots of different things that they're doing right here. We'll keep you up to date here at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Ray Fittipato is on site at the Steelers facility. Uh, whenever whenever they got visits coming in, we'll, if you want all those updates, go to post-gazette.com for all the work that we do there. And if you want to keep listening to this show, we're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here on the Pittsburgh Post Gazette's podcasting up app. Thank you for listening to or watching the North Shore Drive podcast. You can also watch us on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this channel for all of your daily content from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. You can also check out this show again Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Friday here on YouTube. We'll be back Monday breaking things down. Who knows? Maybe they've added Bud Dupree or maybe there's some more top 30 visits who've stopped through. We'll break it all down right here on the North Shore Drive Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the North Shore Drive Podcast of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For six months of digital access to post-gazette.com for just $6, click the link down below in the description.